Jimmy Owen. Is that good? Okay. I hope you all had time to, to get lunch. First question, can anyone who doesn't speak Romanian raise their hands? English it is. Okay, so I hope you have some, some energy left after lunch because in the next 20 minutes I'm going to talk a lot. So get ready for that. My name is uh, Vlad Bistrano. I'm the team lead of the CRO team at Future Cloud. And I'm here today to tell you a bit about how we, how we work at Future Cloud and, and how our CRO team gets involved in the, in the business decisions of the, of the company. So first and first, for those of you who don't have access to the internet and don't know who to check out is, <laughs> uh, we are an uh, online payments business solution. Uh, we specialize in helping customers from, from around the globe uh, sell their products online. We work with around 17,000 clients uh, from literally every industry you can imagine from SaaS, software as a service, to clothes and, and even online flower shops. We transaction in 200 countries. Uh, last year we had around uh, 40 million transactions. Next year I think that the number will double from, from our expectations. Uh, for all uh, those fancy numbers to be possible, uh, we have a team of 400 members, well, actually I think there's, there's more now, uh, in <coughs> four offices around the globe, uh, Romania, US, uh, India, and uh, Amsterdam. But none of this would be possible without a monstrous amount of coffee. So, <laughs> Uh, I actually think this number is, is quite low because I account for half of that, <laughs> this one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we, we don't function on solar energy yet, so a lot of coffee going up. Okay, so now that you are familiar with what the checkout is, let's, let's talk a bit about what the CRO team does at the checkout. CRO as a conversion rate optimization. Uh, traditionally speaking, uh, you might refer to a, a CRO team as a, the team that's running the A-B tests, and that's true, we do that, uh, but that, that's not all. So our focus, uh, I have to check out, is to make sure that the main uh, frame in which clients uh, get to customers that is the checkout page, it's in the name, you check out, uh, is optimized uh, as best as we can. So it can be a, this is an example of a checkout page, right? It can be a digital product, it can be a VPN, it can be a, a antivirus, a, a MacBook in-app checkout page, a Windows in-app checkout page. So regardless of the, the form of this, as long as the checkout page, it is our goal to make sure that no money are left on the table by optimizing the purchase experience. Uh, we do this at product level, so by uh, working with the other departments, departments in, the, in our uh, business to make sure that all the features that we release are up to the, the industry standards. And we do this by working directly with customers, uh, agency style, like uh, on a, a AB test uh, projects. Our team consists of uh, web analytics and CRO experts, so we're a, we're a mixed team. And we did this inside of the same team because we wanted to make sure that we can close the loop. So we, we learned something in a test, we apply it at product level. This way we use the, all the resources that we have effective, effectively. Okay. So, in the, in the few minutes that we have, I don't think we will get the time to go in depth on any topic, but I, I, what I want to do is kind of uh, get your, your interest so that we can have discussions afterwards. So I'm going to go through some princi principles that we're using in our day-to-day -day work. Uh, I'm sure that most of you are already using some of them or are aware of them. Uh, 
but I think it, it's great to, to get them listed and, and get the conversation started on them because they are really important things. So the first one, uh, and it's it will change everything. I'm going to walk you through an example of how we learn this for it to make a bit more sense. So recently we were A-B testing uh, three uh, checkout page templates. So we had control, we had variation one, variation two. You don't need to worry about what's different on here. Uh, unfortunately I won't have the time to go into details, but we can uh, talk a bit more about this uh, afterwards. Point is, after one month of uh, gathering data, all the three variations were break even, which is kind of the worst thing you can see when running an AP test, right? Because it means you invested two months of development in this case and one month of gathering data to find out absolutely nothing. <laughs> of course, because the, dif the conversion rate difference was so small, uh, we didn't have statistical significance. And we were ready to uh, admit our defeat and move on. But before that, we wanted to actually, I thought it's interesting that the difference is so small because in nature you don't see such small differences and, and say, yeah, that's normal. So I wanted to look at uh, as, as many segments as I could and understand where the problem, if any problem is. So I looked at different uh, uh, devices like desktop versus mobile versus tablet. Uh, I looked at different payment methods because uh, one thing that we've noticed when experiencing, with, when experimenting with the checkout page is that usually different payment methods behave really differently like PayPal versus credit card. And then I also looked at uh, a breakdown by country uh, in our top three markets, in this customer's top three markets actually. And this is where, where I, I found something really interesting. In Germany, uh, the customer stock market, uh, well, about around 30% of the total traffic was from Germany. Uh, variation one, one with a 50.81% one with improvement. In Italy, uh, the second market, variation two, was leading with 12% uh, improvement. And in Switzerland, uh, their third market, Control was leading with uh, 11 improvement. <laughs> variation 1, Variation 2, and Control. Are you, are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why, globally, we were seeing literally no improvement. But there are two ways in which we can interpret this. You either say, yeah, we have a break-even test, let's wrap this up into something else. Or you go into detail, you take your time and look at the data and say we have three winning uh, A-B tests with quite a, lot, uh, a large improvement. 15% is not, is not uh, to be passed on. So my point with this example is uh, always take your time and, and make sure the, the conclusion you're taking is with certainty the one that you want to you wanna believe and move forward. Please. Tied down these differences in some cultural place yeah, yeah, or did. something? Yeah, we did. Uh, quick, really quick. It's, it's mostly because uh, Germany uh, prefers uh, PayPal as the payment method, uh, while the other two countries uh, prefer credit card as the main one. So, yeah, we, we, we do have some theories on that. Uh, Again, so this I think this is a public case study that we can we I can actually send you and then we can look into it uh, afterwards. But yeah, you are really right, and I think that ties really nicely in the second thing that I want to discuss. Uh, and it's it's why is more important than what. And to to drive this example, uh, recently we ran an app uh, an A/B test where we added an upsell before the checkout page. For those of you who don't know, the upsell is basically a middle page between the product page and the checkout page where we're basically saying, get this more expensive product. We do this to increase the average order value. This is how the upsell looks like. Really simple page. You wanna guess on the results of this uh, test? You have really nothing to guess on, but 
So it failed catastrophically. 15% <laughs> lower conversion rate and 10% lower average order value, which is like worst of both worlds. Obviously, after seeing this, the client wanted to like, shut this down and never hear of an upsell again, which is understandable. But before that, we really wanted to understand why this happened. Why were we seeing so, so bad results? Uh, after watching around 700 user recordings, it, it, it wasn't a pleasant thing, uh, we realized that a lot of the users weren't really understanding what we want from them on that page. Uh, they, they were thinking that they, the internet, I don't know, some sorcery happened and, and they ended up on a page which wasn't related to their order. So instead of uh, burning down the upsell and never speaking of it again, we redid the test, same exact page, but we added a mention which said, you will be re redirected to your order after a few moments. So this is the new one. Do you want to guess on the, on the results? You're done. Okay. <laughs> 7% conversion rate increase and 12% average order value increase. So the two uh, results are the difference between uh, having a business and having a really high debt, right? So this is, this is huge for one sentence. Uh, from my point of view, any test is a winner as long as if you can learn something from it. So it lost, okay, but why did it lose? And what we can do to for it to win next time. Uh, at the end of the day, we're trading revenue for knowledge, which is a good deal, a good deal. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to discuss today, uh, this might seem a bit general and out of nowhere, but I think it's really important. I think it's actually one of the most important things for CRO and analytics persons. And I'm going to tell you about one of my first tasks had to check out. Uh, someone came to me and asked me, what do we know about our load time? As in, how fast do that our page load? Okay, like a, like a good analytics person, I went ahead and analyzed the data. I went ahead and built a report based on that data. And then I came up with a conclusion. We can do better, was my conclusion at that point. Uh, how much revenue do you think uh, this uh, flow here generated for the checkout? Some million dollars. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> because reports don't generate revenue. Uh, this is something that we usually, as data people, uh, tend to forget. And Excel won't give you money. It's a really powerful tool, but it's a powerful tool to allow you to take action uh, and generate money. So in this example, what I did when I saw that our load time can be better was I started a special team uh, that made and makes sure that our load time stays competitive and is always as low as possible. And that's actually what generated the million dollar you were talking about. So data is awesome, data is power, but only if you do something with it. By itself, it's just numbers. And it's informative, but it's not something to change. Uh, taking action based on data is what makes the difference. And because you guys in this room have the data, you have the power to take action. So I encourage you to go to your uh, businesses uh, stakeholders and make sure that they act on the data you, you provide them. Just a quick recap, so we talked about details changing everything. Uh, don't send data to anyone uh, if you're not sure about it. Uh, I've seen tens of uh, examples where someone sending data because they have a deadline and that data turns out to be wrong because of a missing dot or something like that a few weeks in. And a few weeks in is usually too long to, to fix it. Uh, why is more important than what? So uh, always try to understand why uh, data is the way it is. 
uh, this test loss is really saying nothing. This test loss because of that, and we can do uh, X to, to win next time, is a statement that will, will provide revenue. And always take action based on your, based on your data. That was pretty much it for me. Uh, I think we have some time left for questions, which is why I kind of sped uh, through this. Uh, please go ahead if you, if you have any questions. Please. I was curious how did you manage to uh, demonstrate in your company the one million part? <laughs> 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 in that part. Uh, it's really important for us as data people to know how to help sometimes the other teams and generate that one million yeah. all ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if how many of you saw Claudia's presentation on stories uh, based on data a bit earlier. That really that, that ties in nicely to, to this. So uh, from my experience, getting the data is not a hard part because we do have access to it. So we can uh, get an estimation based on conversion rate. Uh, and uh, missing uh, missing numbers to say something like uh, if the load time would be two seconds lower, then we would see a, on average a 10% higher conversion rate. But the important thing is to get to this statement and send the statement forward, not the spreadsheet. Because usually what happens is if you, if you send the spreadsheet to a, a stakeholder, a manager, let's say, uh, they will focus on, I don't know, one thing from that spreadsheet, uh, which is not your point. So uh, always try to translate spreadsheets to normal functional being language. <laughs> so try to, I don't know, send an email instead of the spreadsheet and say, uh, so I did this analysis and I believe we can do that, which ties into taking action again. I hope I answered your question. Uh, anything else? In your upsell example, so for the second upsell page where the results were good, were those results compared to the first uh, experiment or to uh, the page that didn't have the upsell. They were compared to the baseline, the one that didn't have, because we didn't want to see the fail again. So. <laughs> I was just curious. Yeah. This ties in with the second question. Um, how do you keep from from getting bias in your analysis? Because maybe a client has a problem, and maybe you want to you're focused on that problem, and you want to find that problem, but maybe it's not that. I don't know. Yeah, well, the, the short answer to the question, how do you keep from getting biased, is you don't. <laughs> uh, but to uh, kind of find a workaround for that, uh, I found uh, kind of try to keep objective by looking at data correlated with other data you've seen. So yeah, if you get really focused into one client, uh, you might end up focusing on something that brings the clients uh, 1k per year while in that time you could have worked on something that brings them uh, 10 times more. So try to, to uh, compare with other things you've done and seen that brought uh, other increases. But it's, it's, I mean, I don't think it's possible to be 100% not biased. It's just you're biasing yourself towards something else, basically. Anyone else? Oh, I have a question regarding the uh, awesome test. Sure. Uh, so, uh, before this, you reviewed all these session recordings, and I'm curious how were you able to uh, pinpoint the exact friction that users stumbled upon? I mean, uh, the problem that I faced is that when I uh, look at the videos, all I see that, uh, is that users just like scroll a page or like just bouncing with it and I'm curious, ah, how are you able, how are you, were you able to 
uh, identify the issue. And so uh, so I, you're not talking really loud, so let me uh, ask you, if your question is how did you manage to pinpoint that the issue was uh, users not underst understanding uh, what we want from them on that page? Uh, yeah, kind of, just by analyzing the uh, video recordings. Video recordings are actually a really great tool for understanding what doesn't work. Uh, we basically looked at a converting uh, visitor, right? So uh, a recording of someone who purchased the offset, which is our best case, is what we want. And then we compare that with uh, uh, the patterns of the ones who didn't. So by finding those differences, we, we can understand uh, what's not happening and should happen. And what we saw in this example was that a lot of us users were actually uh, scrolling through the page a bit and then exiting because they didn't understand what, uh, what we wanted from them. Of course, this was an assumption, so it wasn't like we, know, we knew for sure. It was our best guess, because that's what you do in A-B testing. You best guess, and then you test to see if that's true. Uh, for why uh, the conversion rate was lower and the average error value. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Uh, we, we like to address this. Uh, I think we'll actually going to share the version of this with you later. So uh, whatever you, you want to see, you can. Awesome. Okay, so before I go, uh, really quick. Uh, for those of you who uh, haven't been approached by my colleague yet, uh, Anka. <laughs> yeah, she will. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have some uh, contests running in which you can win something really cool. And besides from that, besides that, we also have some job openings in the CRO team. So if you guys found anything that we discussed about interesting. Uh, we welcome and we invite you to continue the discussion and maybe even uh, work together uh, at the checkout. Thanks a lot for, for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. Uh,